Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team for our next installment of our twice monthly podcast series. I'm joined today by Chris Haggerty. Chris and I have an interesting and now long relationship. Started out as a client of mine, buying and flipping homes. Chris is now one of, I guess really not new anymore, but on our team, selling homes. Yeah, yep. yeah I mean, you've, kind of, you've been around for so long now, just in different <laughs> capacities. That you might have actually been one of the original members, quite frankly, at this rate. I don't know about that, but... Uh been there it's been, been there we've done it it's been five years five six i mean how many years yeah six years since we've been started, working started together homes sure yeah yeah and and we've got it's evolved mm -hmm. and there's some funny stories maybe we'll share a couple of them with you and chris has now this wonderful perspective of being a builder i mean from the mid 90s early 90s right? early 90s yeah through today building homes renovating homes built a lot of what we have in newtown today i mean how many homes have you completed to date from bottom up over a hundred new homes, um, dozens and dozens of whole house renovations, hundreds of additions, yeah. kitchen, bath remodels. So uh, and, we've been busy. And a beautiful set of built-ins in my own personal house. Yes. Yeah, so, which we still <laughs> love. My wife, my next you have to come back and do more actually. Okay. So, but I'll let my wife call you. Um, and so we thought it'd be an interesting perspective to bring Chris on today. And, and, and one of the things that Chris and I always butted heads before Chris became an agent <laughs> was the inspection process. Right. And, and there's a great story, and maybe Chris, you want to share it, that we're, we're going through inspections and you, you turned me one day or over the phone because you're angry with something the buyers came back with. And I think it was probably a text because I didn't want to confront you directly. True, but, true. Uh, yeah, and, go ahead. And you said to me something to the effect of, who do you work for, I think was it? Yeah. Because I was urging you to comply with something from the buyer's uh, standpoint that came back in the inspections. I think I may have even added, do your job. Do, you, do your job was a good, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm reading this text and uh, my wife, Jess, is there. And I'm like, no, you know what? I know Chris well enough now. I'm not going to respond. And by the next morning, Chris had then texted, I'm really sorry about that, man. Yeah. <laughs> but now you've got this really inter interesting perspective, which has brought a lot of value to our team, quite frankly that you see what the agents are dealing with, what buyers are dealing with, and also from the inspector's side. And so I thought it'd be interesting today to cover what to expect, what to expect when you're inspecting homes. Right. And all the kind of trials and tribulations, because quite frankly, and I think you'd agree, this is the hardest part of the transaction. Sure, right? definitely. So, and and having, having gone through now the other side of the equation, I've got a far greater appreciation yeah. for what you do and have been doing and did for me. Um, Aww. So You're too far to hug me right now. So, <laughs> so let's let's start with the buyers. Okay. All right. So a buyer's under deposit, new home, mm -hmm. really excited, and we book the inspections. We've got the building inspection, the pest inspection, the radon inspection, the water inspection, the septic inspection, the well inspection, which is different from the water inspection because mm -hmm. that's checking for chemicals. Right. Um, did I leave anything else out? No. Depends on the age. Could be a lead inspection and asbestos. Sure. All kinds of things. All kinds of things that are really scary. Yep. Really expensive. A buyer could be spending thousands of dollars on inspections to do this. And we advise them that they do do whatever is appropriate because mm -hmm. you're it's a really important acquisition. And what should what should a buyer's mindset be, in your opinion, from being on the building side of things? What should a buyer's mindset be going into this process? It's hard, and I think it's our responsibility to set set up the scenario for them to to help ease them into the inspection process. Um, there's the way I see it. There, there are three types of different inspectors. There's the knowledgeable, thoughtful, professional inspector that goes through, does their job, um, is thorough, but you know sets sets expectations properly. There's the I'll call them a hero. Um, they go in and introduce fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And then we'll come back later and say, well, I checked this or I checked that, and that's not a big deal, so we can rescue them. Um, and then there's the third whose um, you know, business model is predicated on failing something to then either refer a repair or do the repair themselves, you know, like in the situation of, uh, and we've had it, where a company comes out and fails the septic and intends to get the repair or the new septic right. um, in the end, but they've left out information. So um, ideally, we, we try and set up our customers with the first one. 
the one who's knowledgeable will be professional about things. Report whatever they see. Mm -hmm. We never we never want anything hidden. We don't want anything candy coated. Right. But and how things are delivered is really a, a big key of that, right? Right. So you, you get an inspector who comes in, to your point, a lot of them, not a lot of them, we, I think we work with some really talented folks, mm -hmm. but there are folks out there who come in and say, you know what, this is a really big deal right here. And immediately when you say that, you see a buyer sees dollar signs, mm -hmm. sees um, a home that's not inhabitable, whatever it might be, when in the reality, it might be a $500 repair. Right. Right? It might be a $100 repair. Right. It might not be even needed a repair. But by setting the expectation that this is a big deal, mm -hmm. um, it, it sets up a buyer who then might ask something of a seller that is not reasonable. Right. Which and, and real estate's an emotional purchase or sale. Absolutely. So, so their reaction to that information is going to be emotional. Yep. Um, the, the more we can keep it on a business level and, and set expectations properly, there's, there's that point where expectations and reality either meet or collide. Right. We want to make sure we deliver that point where they meet. Absolutely. So what as, re as agents, what can we do in advance to prep a buyer's mindset properly? And, and you know, we talked about on the car right up, we have an aging housing population. So it's not necessarily the people in the homes, though statistically Connecticut's aging also, mm -hmm. but the homes themselves. So these homes you built 25 years ago, if they haven't had new HVAC, new roof, new this, new that, new that, they're older homes. Right. So we have to manage the expectations and, and make sure that up front they got the price content that is commiserate with the age of that home and the things that are or are not updated and changed. Right. And then they have to understand also you made the offer knowing the furnace was 25 years old and needs to be replaced within a year. It doesn't mean then you go back in an inspection and renegotiate for a new furnace. Right. Unless it's an immediate health hazard, right? The, the, the furnace guy comes in and says, wow, this is gonna blow up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's gonna blow the whole house, the kingdom come. You need a new one. Okay, well, that's a health issue. If we have to, you know, a health issue we have to address. Right, right. But it's our job to say up front, say, here, here are the disclosures. Here's what we know. Yeah. We do know that these things are old. Let's make an offer with the understanding that we believe them to be properly functioning for all that we know. We assume, we're going to assume they're probably functioning, properly functioning, and we're going to make a price, you know, negotiate a price that, with the understanding that in a couple of years, we're going to pay to replace that ourselves. Right. How do we set that mindset though when then an inspector comes in and says, you know, it's 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 past its useful life. That's what inspectors love to say. Right. right? And it's true, right? The manufacturer mm -hmm. says this is going to last 20 years. Well, Mr. Buyer, as the inspector, I'm looking at this. This is past its useful life. How do we manage that? Because then its buyer's going to come back and say, I want a new one. Right. Well, and they're entitled to say that, you know, and every buyer is, but like you said before, the more things you ask for that aren't health or safety related, the less your bargaining power is. Um, you, there's an opportunity to upset the seller, that the seller will go either to another offer or just withdraw completely. And just let, let their emotions take also, whether right. fair or not, they might say, well, you're nickel and diming me. Right. Right. So a furnace that's going to blow up a fair ask. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that we run into all the time are like, oh, you know, these hardwood floors are a little scratched. We want money to repair those. I, you know what? That's really to be expected in a used house. And even for, for the first standpoint, the, the buyer has to understand that, okay, the furnace in the house that you're buying, that you wrote the initial offer on, is 25 years old. Yep. If you do end up getting a new one, you have to understand that adds value to the house. So there should be a share in there somewhere between the buyer and the seller. Right. If on I'm gonna the put cost. A, if I'm going to put a new furnace in, well, my home's now worth more money. Exactly. So why are you going to be the only one reaping the benefit of a brand new furnace? Right. As a, uh, totally fair. Yep. I mean, and then, you know, what's interesting also, when a buyer buys a brand new home, they think there's no money to put in, right? But what do, what do most homes not come with? Oftentimes, right? Sometimes you guys weren't putting in driveways. Right. You weren't putting in landscaping or if it was very bare bones landscaping, right? right? Yeah. So a driveway is going to be eight to 20 grand, depending how long it is. Yep. Uh, landscaping is going to be eight to fifty grand, depending on what you want. Right. Um, there's all kinds of other costs associated with new construction that nobody grasps. Also. Sure. So there's always this kind of happy meeting, and with new construction, you're paying a premium up front because it's new. Right. And like a new car, you drive it off the lot; it's worth less the next day. Same thing in new construction. Yep. Um, so there's really there's got to be that balance, and I think it really I think it comes down to us, and then making sure our clients are working with the right people who are managing expectations. Exactly. So we've covered the buyer. We say, you know, we're trying to upfront say, listen, these are the things that are appropriate to ask for. We always try to keep them the health, safety, major mechanical. Things are going to incur major cost 
or threat to safety, you know, imminently, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and we want to manage the emotion of fear, right? We want to make sure the people we're working with are just kind of reporting what they see. And I also would urge a buyer never to listen to the inspector on what's fair for them to ask of a seller. Okay. You know, we had a buyer, I had an inspector one time, a guy I, I really love, um, actually said, you know, don't worry about it. the seller will handle that. And I looked at him and I said, we don't know that. <laughs> you can't set that expectation of what a seller will or will not handle. And you don't know the whole negotiation background behind that. Right. So we want to work with people who are just reporting truthfully and honestly what they see. Mm -hmm. And then let the attorneys and the, the agents deal with everything else. Right. Okay, let's flip the script. Let's go to the seller standpoint. Okay. All right. What do you think about pre-inspections before homes are listed? It's good and it's bad. Um, you're, you're walking into the negotiation knowing exactly what the playing field is. However, that said, there's, there's the opportunity that you may find something that you didn't expect or anticipate that is a major issue and, and needs to be disclosed. Or repaired. Or repaired. Right. So not saying that a buyer should ignore, I mean, a seller should ignore the um, major items, but if they don't know it, they don't have to disclose it. Um, it's true. The opportunity that it may be found is, is high, but there's a chance it may not be. Right. Um, there's definitely a double-edged sword. I always struggle with that debate. And so I said, should I get an inspection now? And we go through the same conversation that you just said. I'm not sure it's worth it. No. You know, it's, um, you're opening yourself up to, to more scrutiny. Right. Potentially a whole lot more expense. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you might not be prepared to handle any of that at the moment. Right. Um, now, then again, if you find, let's say they have a pre-inspection, the septic fails, and you put a new septic in, well, your home's not worth more money, too. True. Are you going to recoup all that expense? Probably not, but you're probably going to be able to recoup a bunch of it. Right. So it's just no. I don't think there's a right answer. And it's, I think it also depends on the um, the abilities of the seller also, right? If right. they don't have the cash to do work, you might not want to find out about it now. True. So, All right, so the seller then. I'm the buyer, and you're the, you're, the, you're the seller, and I present to you a list of stuff. Okay. Right? Ranging from the furnace that's going to blow up to the hardwood floors that are nicked to everything, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I forced my agent to present this, even though he or she has said, listen, this is going to upset the seller. How do you manage the seller's expectations and emotions when they receive a list that has got a mix of valid stuff and then stuff that's just like, they saw the floors were scratched. They were here 15 times before they made an offer. Right. Right. So it, from a seller standpoint, you got to be sitting there like, they've been planning this. They knew they were going to put this on there and knock me down. Right. Right. So now, is this, are you asking me as... You're the seller. As, I'm the seller. I'm the builder. I'm the seller. Yes. Okay. So how do you then turn around? You know, how do you manage the, the, the emotions or what, you know, what, what is the play? Because remember, this is a business transaction, mm -hmm. right? Everyone wants to get the best deal, the most money or not lose as much money or make the most money, whatever it is. So from a seller's perspective... Well, you know how I'm going to react. I'm going to. I'm. I'm very involved in my my product, and, and. But I want. I want you to think more like a seller. As if from a real estate agent perspective. Okay. So you're an agent. You've got a client who's selling their house. Okay. And you get this laundry list. How are we advising them? We have to advise them to take the emotion out of it and to look at it as a as a business transaction. But like I was starting to say, I'm I'm emotionally connected to my product. And I react the same way a homeowner will react that, you, you know, do. you're almost insulting me. You definitely um, do. Yeah. And so I'll fight it. You know, that's my initial reaction. We have to, as agents, we have to kind of temper that a little bit and, and walk them through it, you know, hold their hand a little bit um, and, and say, listen, these are the things we have to take care of. These are the things you may want to consider taking care of. And these are just throw-ins. They're trying to, you know, stack the deck. Right. Um, if they get some great, if not, they probably know they're not. So who, who cares? Yeah. Um, it's, it's an emotional thing. We have to remind them that, and, and this has been true in, in nearly 30 years of my experience. Your first offer is usually your best. What do you, what do you, and what do you always tell me? Money now is better than money later. Exactly. Right. Yep. So we, we talk about our market that we work in. We cover up to 20 towns a year, but in essence, they're all kind of the same. There's a lot of stagnation. There's not a lot of movement mm -hmm. on price. Certain price points don't move. So you get that price points not moving. You get an offer. You can't sit there as a seller and say, I'll wait for the next one. No, you because the take, next one may not come. And if it does, it could be less. It could be 20 grand less. Yeah. So 
it's got to you got to deal with what you have on the table mm-hmm. now. Cut your losses if maybe if there are any and move on. Sure. You know, if we were in a strong appreciating market, well, you're in a different position as a seller. But we tell our sellers, like, listen, you, you got to find a way to make this work at all costs within right. reason. You know, we don't, you know, we don't want you to be upset at, at the end of this. But similar to what a financial advisor would say to their client, mm-hmm. say, Chris, you know, that stock that we bought a couple years back was doing great. It's not doing so hot anymore, and I really think you should sell it and either get into this or stay in cash. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to argue with he or she. You're going to say. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm losing money. I don't want to lose more money. Yeah, let's get out of this stock. Yep. The house is the same way. Yep. Except for, as you said earlier, the emotion. Right. Which clouds everybody's judgment sometimes. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But it's part of the business. And it kind of makes it exciting and fun. And the other end of the emotion is when somebody's so incredibly happy to sell or buy. Or, you know, it, there's, there's just no in between in this business. Right. Yeah. It's just incredible highs and incredible lows. And I think we all become junkies. Yep. Um, going after that high as much as possible. So, but hey, thank you, Chris, for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Andy Sachs. This is Chris Haggerty, Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team. We'll talk to you soon.